Welcome to today's webinar, Tap into the Growing Installation Market, brought to you by Pest Management Professional and by our sponsor, Tap Installation. I'm Diane Safranik from North Coast Media, publisher of Pest Management Professional Magazine, and I will be your event manager. Before we get started, I want to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded. You are currently in a listen-only mode. The recording will be available one day from today on our website, mypmp.net slash webinars. A link to the on-demand recording will also be emailed to you when it is available. At this time, I'd like to acquaint you with the ways in which you can participate during today's presentation. Please notice in the lower left-hand corner of your console that there is a Submit button. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Just type in the text box at the bottom left, then click Submit to place your question in queue. Questions that were submitted during registration may be covered in this webinar. Some questions may also be answered in an upcoming issue of PMP Magazine or in one of our biweekly e-newsletters, The Buzz. We strive to answer as many of your questions as possible. Finally, if you experience any technical difficulties during today's event, select Help to submit your issue and Assistant Producer Allison Barwas or I will personally assist you. Now I'd like to turn today's event over to our moderator, Pest Management Professional Managing Editor, Will Nepper. Thanks, Diane. Uh, as she said, this is Will Nepper. I'm the Managing Editor of PMP Magazine, and we are very happy today to have Rick Harris, who's the Vice President of Sales for TAP Pest Control Insulation. Uh, not only is he Vice President of Sales for TAP, he's also an industry veteran for 25 years, so he has uh, been in the trenches and speaks your language, um, which I think is valuable in a presentation like this. I uh, also want to mention, yes, again, there's going to be a Q&A after the presentation, so stick around and uh, hopefully we'll get to some of your questions and you'll uh, get some great information from some other people's questions. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Rick. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Will, and welcome to everybody who's attending today. Certainly my favorite topic is TAP pest control insulation, something that I enjoyed selling and installing in the field uh, and now can support pest control companies and implementing it into their overall business offering. So let's jump right in this thing and get started. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing to be talking about uh, pest control insulation, uh, especially when you're talking to pest control professionals. In a lot of cases, they really don't uh, associate pest control with insulation work. So it really is an innovative method of pest protection. It uh, kind of puts together the pest management professional that is really focusing more so nowadays than in the past all about IPM and, and green offerings and things that make sense to the environment and, uh, and of course, an insulation company that offers that more efficiently heated and cooled home. So to be able to offer both in one unique product is certainly a great thing. And that's where we get to what it is, TAP insulation. The words TAP, uh, T-A-P, stand for Thermal Acoustical Pest Control. And, you know, and that's a, there's a good reason for that. You know, a TAP is superior in all three. Um, it has the highest R value per inch of your traditional insulations out there, so it gives you that superior thermal quality. And then at the same time, it also gives you that acoustical quality that is much, much better than your traditional fiberglass or other types of insulation. You definitely do get a superior acoustical quality from it. And then being a pest control insulation makes it unique in that it's also going to enhance that overall pest management approach that you're providing to your clients. So what is it? Yeah, well, it is, in fact, a class one building material. Uh, it, it's a recycled newspaper. Uh, it does comply with all of the different standards. In fact, it exceeds most of your standards in terms of being a building material, but it's also an EPA-registered pesticide. As an EPA-registered pesticide, of course, that makes it exclusive to pest management professionals in terms of installing it. As you can see, it is, in fact, labeled for cockroaches, termites, uh, inclu including formosans, 
ants, silverfish, earwigs, and, and many, many more. Of course, we will make the uh, label accessible to you. Uh, we can send it to you, or you can certainly access that label through our website. But the fact that it literally is labeled for all these different pests and, and that it is actually a registered pesticide, that makes it a very important tool for pest management professionals. In terms of the overall revenue opportunities that are available, it's just compelling uh, the amount of revenue that is available to the pest management professional when they offer this service. Whether you want to do attic capping, which would be just installing tap insulation over top of the existing insulation that's already there, or whether you're doing removal work, maybe you have an attic space that is um, just, just really nasty, uh, infested with nuisance wildlife or rodents or, uh, you know, who knows, bats. There are many different things that we know get in there. Certainly, um, attic removal is a great way to, uh, to make revenue as well. Um, and let's face it, attic restoration work is becoming a very popular um, revenue stream for the pest control industry overall. And then finally, crawl space insulation for those crawl spaces or basement areas that don't have insulation up underneath the floor joists. Some of the program advantages with these three, certainly uh, as stated, cap insulation is in fact exclusive to the pest management professional, and that's important because you don't have to worry about competing with insulation companies. They're not installing tap because they're not licensed to do so. Uh, from a pest control standpoint, I spent most of my career in the north, and I know that when season is off, you know, when it, typically right around this time of year things start slowing down and then you're trying to keep busy during the winter months, this gives you that year-round revenue source. You can switch gears and go right into your insulation work, uh, and of course, during the season, during your growth period, you would want to, you know, get those leads or identify those clients that could benefit from TAP and then reach out to them this time of year to do that, you know, quality assurance inspection and talk to them about their thermal envelope and what you can do. But certainly it's, it's just something that you can focus on this time of year and just really keep busy. Uh, in terms of the incremental revenue, st revenue stream, this is uh, revenue that's coming to you from your existing clientele in most cases. You're already there. You're in the house. To be able to inject some incremental revenue into your P&L is just a great thing to do. The green effort is so important um, to be environmentally responsible and offer something that's oriented strictly to the pest management professional. We're very proud to be able to do that. And then in terms of being an Energy Star labeled product, that's a great thing as well because in a lot of cases it makes it eligible for a lot of uh, uh, tax rebates and things like that. In terms of being able to uh, provide this service to your clientele quickly and easily, it really is just that. Um, a couple of guys can typically do a job in about four to five hours max. Uh, and, you know, your profit margins are very high. And we're going to go through some of the exact examples about that. So when we talk about the overall selling, and that's typically a question that comes up a lot, you know, how do you sell it? What's the way to do it most effectively? You know, uh, it, it, you've got to keep in mind that you're selling this to your existing clientele. These are people that they already know who you are. They're familiar with your technicians. They know what to expect, and they know that these guys are coming in and doing, you know, a thorough inspection of the structure on a regular basis in most cases, and it's just it's a very unique thing in the pest management industry that we get that type of access. So it gives you the ability to, again, build on those existing client uh, relationships that you already have, whether you know it or not. And i got to say, this is one of the things that I really honestly, that, that surprised me. Um, as many years as I was in pest control, I never really made that connection that, you know, these are people that are allowing us into their homes regularly with a high-powered flashlight to look in all these sacred places that nobody else sees under the beds and in the closets and in the bathrooms uh, to protect their home from pest intrusion. So to be able to take that loyalty and offer them additional services, it really helps to build on that relationship. It's direct marketing, so you're dealing directly with your people. You don't want to get into mass mailing and all types of other advertisements. 
It's just not necessary in most cases. Again, PMP staff's already in the homes, and the clients get to a return on this investment. It's not just peace of mind like your traditional pest control services. Uh, they, they will pay you know, $100, $120 every quarter for a quarterly service just to have peace of mind and, and not to have to worry about seeing bugs and, and to know that they're, they can call if there's a problem. Well, in this case, they actually get a return on that investment uh, in, in the, the form of uh, reduced energy costs. And again, you've got those local municipality and utility rebates that are available uh, to people when they do these types of upgrades. So when we talk about TAP being green, I think it's really important to describe how we do that. Well, TAP is truly a green product. 85 to 87% of the product when it comes to you is post-consumer recycled paper that's been impregnated with pesticide grade boric acid. So this is recycled newspaper that has been impregnated with pesticide grade boric acid, making it an actual labeled pesticide. It takes about 10 times less energy to manufacture TAP than your traditional fiberglass insulations or other types of traditional insulation. We do have 16 plants nationally, so if you're in Sacramento, we don't have to ship it to you from Miami. Um, we have plants that are spread out across the country, giving us the ability to get it to you um, and at the same time at a, uh, you know, using a much smaller carbon footprint to do it. Again, Energy Star labeled pesticide application makes it very unique and it makes it very special to those that are using it. So that's how we can say that it's green. And something else that I always like to emphasize is in terms of being green, you just can't get much greener than TAP because not only are you using a recycled product, which in itself is responsible to the environment, but you're taking a recycled product, recycled newspaper, and reapplying it into somebody's home as a permanent application that helps that homeowner actually conserve energy as well. So this is green personified, and I'm just really proud to be able to offer that. This is what it looks like when it comes to you. It comes in a 30-pound bag, and uh, we sell these to you in pallets of 36. Again, registered pesticide. It is exclusive to your industry. 30-pound bags, pallets of 36. And when you, we have several different ways to purchase the product, whether you want to purchase it in palletized forms, if you wanted to purchase it just stacked floor to ceiling, wall to wall, we could ship you a tractor trailer load of this product and just drop the trailer and have you use the trailer. Um, there's so many different ways that we can get this delivered to you and make it easier because storage is certainly uh, a challenge in many cases. Okay, so when we talk about opportunities, there's opportunities all over the place, and in most cases, more so than we even know. So I use this example. If you can see the ceiling joists, when you get up inside that attic space, that house needs a lot more insulation. This picture that you're viewing right now is a pretty typical example of what you might run into if you go into somebody's attic. I know in the many years that I was doing this, that was pretty common. You, know, you could see the joists, you knew about where to step. In this case, if you would agree with me that this is pretty common, what you're looking at here is an overall R value in that attic space of 19. In fact, I'm being generous by saying 19 because those are two by six joists right there. And in actuality, uh, R19 is, um, that example is based on six inches of rolled fiberglass insulation. And as you can see by this picture, it's a little bit less than six inches there. But if there were, in fact, six inches of rolled fiberglass, that would give you an R value of 19. And, of course, we teach you how to you know, come up with R values, how to calculate that. It's very, very simple. Uh, rolled fiberglass insulation gives you an R value or a resistance to heat transfer of 3.2 per inch. And if you multiply that by 6, it gives you 19.2. So rounding that to the nearest 5, 
this is an existing R value of 19, which you're looking at right here. So the question is, what should it be? Well, it just so happens that I have a graphic that I stole off of the Department of Energy website showing what their recommendations are in terms of R value. And you can see that the recommendations here vary depending on where you are located in the country. If you would just choose your state and then pick you know, obviously you can see the color that that area is, and then the number, and you can see that the numbers associated with those zones are right there in the existing home graphic. So uh, if you were just, say, in the middle of the country, say you were in uh, four or five, you can see that the Department of Energy recommends anywhere from 38 to 60 to 49 to 60, our value in the attic space. So if we were to go back and look at that attic that we looked at a moment ago, you know, with an R value of 19, if you should be 49, then the R value deficiency of your house is 30, which is really pretty compelling in my opinion. You know, you should be 49, you've got R19, there's a lot of money to be saved if we were to bring your R value up to where it should be. So the opportunities are everywhere. Looking at individual insulations that are out there, as you can see here, I've got four different examples, fiberglass bats, rolled fiberglass bats, which are very common. Uh, again, 3.2 R value per inch. If you had loose fill fiberglass, which is in that second picture, uh, it, maybe it looks like cotton or maybe it's pink or yellow in color. If it's blown in chunks like that, then that's loose fill fiberglass. And you get an R value of 2.5 per inch. So that, again, it makes it very simple to come up with overall R values because you just measure the depth of the existing insulation that's up there. And I typically take several different measurements to come up with a con an overall average because you see dips and valleys and, and little peaks in there. You come up with an average and, and then you multiply it by the, the inches by the R value per inch. Mineral wool, which kind of looks like an old dirty cotton, uh, 2.8 per inch, and of course, tap insulation at 3.7 gives you the high star value of your traditional insulation. So certainly, you don't have to put as much depth in, and then of course, you get um, a very nice uh, guard against air infiltration with tap as well. So all that being said, Let's kind of look at the individual services that I mentioned earlier. The first one in those three is the attic capping, and that's putting insulation or right over top of the existing insulation. So this is that attic again with the six inches of rolled fiberglass, and you can see our technician is blowing tap insulation right on top of it, bringing it up to uh, whatever R value the customer was interested in bringing it to. And again, it could go anywhere from 38 all the way up to 60, depending on what region of country, the country that you're in. And I do have companies that will offer three different services. Maybe you might offer the customer a good, better, or best approach. Maybe 38 is a good approach. And if they you know, can afford it, if their budget allows for it, maybe you bring them up to 49 or 60. And then you would just offer them the three choices. So if you were putting in a cap of tap uh, or blowing right over top of the existing insulation, you would first protect the existing ventilation. Now you can see in that little picture in the upper right corner those baffles that are installed between the joists or between those trusses as they go upward. That is going to continue to allow that ventilation to come through after you've blown this insulation in. So that's the first step. You protect the existing ventilation. You protect any recessed lights that are there, if in fact there are any. You just put like a top hat over top of it, and I've got pictures of all this. You put in your attic rulers so that you can identify the depth as you're blowing insulation in. You protect the flooring of the customer's home, obviously, with drop cloths. You want to make sure that you don't stain their carpets or scratch their hardwood floors. Choose the best route for the hose. Maybe it's up through a window. And then you can blow right over top of that existing insulation to increase the R value to what the Department of Energy recommends or what the customer would desire. And at the same time, you're applying a whole new layer of permanent pest protection. And as we all know, 
because this is pesticide grade boric acid, as long as it's there, it's going to continue killing bugs. There's just no shelf life to it. It just continues to last for the life of the home. So looking at some individual pictures of these steps being done, you can see in the upper left corner our technician is installing that baffle and putting a little piece of rolled fiberglass in there to kind of protect the base of that baffle. In the next picture, he's installing some uh, top hat material over top of a recessed light. That's going to allow the heat from that recessed light can to continue to convect up. And then he's climbing up into the attic space and running that hose. We've installed the attic rulers. If you look at the bottom left corner picture, um, the attic ruler is stapled in place, and then a mark is put on there so that we know how far we're going to blow that insulation. Then we load up the hopper and blow and go. It's just really not that hard to do. Now, in talking about an overall profit margin, looking at the gross profit margin, you can see in this example, we're doing a pretty conservative example. Um, in this particular case, we're charging $1.20 per square foot. You can charge anywhere from $0.85 cents to $2, depending on the depth that you're blowing in. In this example, we're only adding 6 inches of tap insulation. So let's just say on an, an average, if you look at under the revenue, 1,500 square foot attic, which is pretty typical across the country, and we're charging them $1.20 per square foot, that's $1,800. So this is the asking, asking price to the actual prospect. So if they got a 1,500 square foot house, we're going to put in enough insulation to where it's going to cost them a buck 20 per square foot. The cost is 1,800. Now this includes the attic prep, the uh, attic rulers, the top hats over recessed lights, up to three recessed lights. After that, I typically charge more, but 1,800 bucks is pretty typical. Now you're going to spend about $380 in actual material, and that would include the tap insulation itself. Uh, additional collateral things like uh, baffles and top hats and attic rulers and things like that, throwaway things like your Tyvek suits and dust masks and so on. 380 bucks is what it will cost you. And then two men for four hours based on $20 per hour estimate. You know, your total cost there is, uh, as you can see, 380 and 160 What's that? 540 bucks. Your profit is 1260 bucks on this job. That's a 70% gross margin. Not bad. And honestly, this is what our clients are making on these jobs. And it gives you that wiggle room to be able to maybe offer them a lower price if you need to. If they're an existing client, maybe they've got termite and pest control coverage, you go ahead and knock off 10%. You can still do that and still walk away with a very healthy profit margin. Now, in terms of the overall install, we sell everything to you. We're going to sell you all of the equipment that you need. In fact, we've got a package here that I'm showing you, and this is the 475 package. And for about 8000 we set you up with everything that you need to get involved in this program. And we're not just going to sell you the equipment. We're going to go ahead and provide a full day of training as well. You can see in this picture we've got the leave behind flyers and door hangers and um, you know, uh, install guides and sales guides and all kinds of collateral that you can use to get your marketing strategy together. We sell you the equipment package. Uh, this picture all the way to the right is our Crendel 475 blower, and this is the most popular machine that's out there. Um, this will literally blow all the insulation into the attic in a couple of hours. In terms of the time that's involved, certainly the prep and getting the baffles and everything in really takes more time. And blowing the insulation in is the uh, really the icing on the cake, as it were. But um, this machine does it very well, and it's incredibly durable and reliable. So it's our premier product. And then, of course, you get your hose reel and your hose and the baffles. And this whole kit that we send to you has everything that you need pretty much for the first three jobs that you do. And in, in addition to that, we also give you some demonstrating equipment. You can see in the bottom center picture, that's a, an example of our sound buckets, as well as our thermal demo unit, which gives you the ability to demonstrate um, the value of 
of using tap as opposed to your traditional fiberglass insulations. So again, for about $8,000, you are completely set up with this equipment package. I am going to come right out to your facility and spend a full day um, you know, in-house training with your staff. We are going to go through the product, our value, how to measure up a house, how to ascertain what they have got and what they should have. We go through sales. Uh, how to overcome objections, how to properly propose the work, and then we go through all the steps in an actual job. And then after that, we go out and we go on site and we actually do a complete job. We're going to go in and blow some insulation and we're going to put the equipment together and we're going to talk with the customer and we're going to, or maybe we do your house. That's entirely up to you. Now, there is some things that you'll need in addition to this package. We suggest that uh, you have either a box truck or a trailer because this equipment along with the insulation that you are going to need to bring with you really isn't going to fit in the back of a pickup truck. So you need to have, uh, these are two examples you can see that we have got a client, Admiral Pest Control, they are a great client of ours out in uh, Los Angeles, California and they do a great job with it. And then the, the trailer here is another one of our clients that, that just wants to to talk about taps, so we said, hey, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, you know, in addition to it being secured storage for your equipment and your insulation, those of you that are storage challenged, you know, it, you have the ability to keep everything right in there along with your tools. Uh, it's easy to load up, just hook up to it and go. And of course, it's ongoing advertisement rolling down the road. I know when I was doing this earlier on, we had a big trailer and we parked that at one of our clients' driveways, uh, or not their driveway, but their, their parking lot. They had a business on a very busy intersection, and we paid them uh, a little bit of money every month to let us park the trailer there, and that, that definitely gave us a lot of phone calls too. Um, so to be able to work uh, with protection from the weather as well as having that secured storage, we, we really seriously suggest that you have uh, either a trailer or a truck. Now, going into the next revenue stream, that would be your attic restoration work, removing that old insulation that's you know, soaked with urine or droppings, or maybe you've got some dead carcasses in there, whether it be nuisance wildlife, rodents, or whatever. Um, you know, attic restoration work has become very popular and certainly a revenue stream that uh, exists. And of course, we offer all of that equipment as well. So. Uh, you know, in talking about doing attic restoration work, there's a lot of things that you run into in an attic space. You know, you're going to find nests, you're going to find waste, you're going to have issues with noises up there. Maybe your clients are hearing noises. Maybe there's bacteria. In a lot of cases, with rodents or other types of nuisance wildlife, you know, there's bacteria associated with that. Sometimes they'll damage the wiring, and, and maybe there's odors. These are all good reasons to offer them a complete attic restoration service uh, where you clean that all out, disinfect it, and start them with a fresh new layer of this pest control insulation. These are all issues that we run into. And something that, you know, for many years I kind of didn't do it. I, I was looking the other way and I was focusing on doing just the attic capping. But, you know, it was pretty common for people to say, geez, you know, there's, there's a lot of bacteria, it smells up there, it really is a stinky place to go, and, and I'm concerned about the health of my children who have bedrooms upstairs. You know, uh, this is, it really brings you to the point where you've got to start offering this, uh, this solution. And the solution is doing that restoration service. So these are the things that we're going to do. We're going to remove that nasty old insulation that's up there including vacuuming up any additional waste or debris that's left over once you pull the insulation out. Sanitize the attic space. Once again, returning that attic to a clean, healthy space. Do the exclusion work that's required, sealing up around those pipes or cables or wires and up around the, uh, uh, the perimeter of the roof line. All that can be sealed up with copper mesh, expanding foam, or whatever makes sense and then prep it for the installation of this clean, green pest control insulation that's also going to help them save money. So when we look at that, we want to take a look at how we're going to get it out of there quickly and efficiently. 
And one of the things is this tap vacuum system that we offer. And boy, is this a game changer. If you're removing loose fill insulation, and of course this isn't going to work for rolled fiberglass, you've got to kind of bag that and pull it out, but if it's loose fill, whether it's fiberglass, for um, there are other types of things that are loose fill, like maybe uh, rock wool or um, some cases there are people that are doing remediation with vermiculite or maybe even old cellulose that was installed back in the 50s or 60s. It needs to be brought out of there. You can do that by using this vacuum system. This is an 18-horsepower vacuum that will easily suck out all that old insulation along with droppings and urine and carcasses and everything else that's there. It deposits it directly into these disposable bags, and then you can go ahead and provide that nice, clean, healthy space and be ready for uh, doing your disinfecting work rather quickly. And then when we look at the overall package, you can see that we've put this together in a package that makes sense for everybody. Uh, right off the bat, you get 175 feet of hose, and this is six-inch hose that you're drawing through. This picture just really doesn't do justice for this machine. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good-sized machine. Uh, it's an electric start, 18-horsepower V-twin Briggs on there, and, uh, and you're sucking through a six-inch hose. Um, but we send you the whole package, the hose reel to store your hose on, clamps, connectors, the four-foot pickup tube that you see leaned up against that hose reel. We send you a case of bags and, of course, contracts, forms, and other types of things that you might use to market the program. Anything that you need to be successful in this program we know is going to translate to revenue or your purchases from us. So we're here to always help and assist in any way possible to get you up and running. To look at a removal example, um, depending on what you're charging for the job, it always depends on you know how accessible is the attic, how dirty is it, how much insulation are we removing, uh, ease of access overall. These are all things that go into the price. But as you can see, once again, it could vary anywhere from $1.50 up to $4 per square foot. And this is based on our existing clientele and what they charge to do this work. Um, but just kind of going with a conservative 250 per square foot example, again, 1,500 square foot attic, 250 per square foot. And this is just for the removal. It has nothing to do with adding tap. This price is 3750 And then when you figure out your expenses, you're looking at you know safety gear, disposable consumables, bags, and so on, about 150 bucks. And then again, two men, four hours at 20 bucks a piece per hour, that's a buck 60. So you've got about what 310 bucks invested in this job, and you're charging 34.40. And believe me, you're going to earn your money. Don't feel guilty about that because it's not a happy place to be. It's nasty work. But all that being said, with the right equipment, it's done quickly and easily and very efficiently. And another thing is the customers that we're finding are selling a lot of this work are the ones that have been able to figure out really what's covered from the insurance carriers. And they can go into those clients and say, you know, I see that you use, for instance, Liberty Mutual for your home insurance or, you know, whatever. This is something that traditionally they will cover or this is how much money they will uh, typically contribute toward this service. Uh, being up to date on what's going on really helps you to position yourself as a consultant uh, for the client that's looking to restore that attic space. But again, very profitable, this removal example. And then again, you know, now you're going to have 15 inches of tap that needs to be put in rather than just six or eight, because once you re remove everything out of there, clean it and disinfect it, then you're going to prep for the tap insulation. And at the end of the day, this job's going to be about a six, seven, or eight thousand dollar attic restoration service, and I promise you, they buy it. Just we've sold so many of these, and we have so many clients that do it well. Something else that comes up when you're getting into this volume of work, you know, if you're going to go up there and do a complete attic restoration, you're spending some time up there. Air quality is important. 
when we get to the safety aspect of the work, we don't want any of your employees to contract any type of disease or pathogens associated with working in that environment. So, uh, you know, think about that for a moment or two. As you're working, very important to protect your lungs from you as well as the people that are in the home or even the neighbors that are outside walking their dogs. Dust, fiberglass particulates, dried pest droppings, urine, you name it, there's things that become airborne. So your attention to these important details is going to make certain that your customer not only appreciates the fact that you're doing a good job for them, but that you've taken that extra step to protect them as well as yourselves from these types of threats. So what we've got now, which is another nice little product, is this tap clean air machine. You can see that this is a pretty good size machine, and basically what it does is it, it's a, if you've got background in construction work at all, this is an air scrubber or a negative air machine. And you can see that this machine will draw all the air out of that attic space. Depending on the size and square footage of the attic, this thing is set up to change out 2,000 cubic feet per second. I'm sorry, per minute. 2,000 cubic feet per minute. So in most cases, your average attic, you're looking at about every three minutes, every bit of air in that attic being changed out. So when you're drawing, you know, that nasty air out along with the dust particulates and other types of pathogens that could be in the air, you're drawing them away from the technician, you're lowering the overall dust that's in the air, and you're filtering it through a three-stage filtration system that is going to uh, filter it all the way down to HEPA filtration. So it's, it's a pretty impressive piece of equipment, and it's very quick and very easy to set up. It's going to give you a cleaner, healthier work environment overall. It's going to drastically lower the amount of dust that's up there. Again, it's HEPA. Uh, and I think overall, it really, it's really a safer, cleaner, healthier uh, operation when you're using this piece of equipment. It's very easy to set up, once again. Standard, plug it in the wall, turn it on, and let her rip, and, uh, and it's going to bring all of that nastiness out of the attic while you're up there working. Now, again, we're here to help you. Um, we're here to offer the sales training. When we do that initial setup, uh, when you purchase your equipment package, we're going to come out to your facility, and we're going to do the complete sales training in class, and, and we cover all different aspects of it, the inspection, the sales guide, how to quote it, how to measure it, how to come up with um, your R values, the different types of forms that we have available to you as well as exhibit materials like the thermal demo unit and the sound bucket demos. And then, of course, the install training. We want you to understand everything in terms of the tools, the equipment, the technique, how to use the guides, and how to really offer the best overall service to your clientele. We would never want you to be out there providing a service that's going to get you in trouble. Um, and then, of course, we also offer web support. Much like what we're doing here today, we offer ongoing web support to our clients as well. Uh, we hold webinars regularly, about two to three times a month, especially during season. Not that there's a special season for TAP, but it just seems to be much more popular this time of year. So we're offering things like, you know, sales training webinars, install training webinars for your technicians to view. We have an administrative training webinar to talk to your actual administrative bookkeeping crew or the folks that are doing uh, client support there in your office. We're going to be offering things like just this week I did an attic training webinar. It's just all about attic safety and etiquette. So these are all things that we offer to you because we want you to be comfortable. Of course, there's also a whole bunch of training curriculum videos on our website. Um, if you go into the member section of our website, we give you complete access to, I believe there's now 32 videos available to our uh, clientele, along with a whole database of forms and uh, fact sheets and all types of things that are available to you once you become a client of ours. Now, getting back to the other line of revenue, underneath the floors. Now, we know that there are certain segments of our country that have, you know, more under-the-floor crawl space areas than others, but those other 
regions within our company that have basements certainly are also opportunities. If there's insulation up under those floor joists, it really is something that needs to be looked at because traditionally they'll install, uh, builders will install this rolled fiberglass insulation up under there, and paper-backed fiberglass insulation is just not very well suited for a crawl space or a basement even. You know, you get moisture down there, you get problems, and the next thing you know, you've got mold, and of course you get insects in there uh, and rodents. So it's just really not very well suited. So replacing it with an alternative material as part of your crawl space encapsulation program or a crawl space restoration service, we suggest that you use Comfort Therm. It's a great product. Uh, it's something that's, um, you know, it's going to work very well for you. It looks a lot nicer. Uh, you're not going to have issues with moisture building up in there. And because it's encapsulated with plastic, it's going to continue to allow, um, it, it, it's perforated plastic that allows the, the uh, airflow to keep it dry, but at the same time, it's going to keep the itch way down. It's not going to have a lot of itching associated with the install of that product. Now, this is not a pest control insulation. It's not something that's going to kill bugs for you. That being said, as a pest control provider, you can do Boracare applications or Timbor treatments in conjunction with this product. And this is not an exclusive product to us. You could actually purchase this uh, at your big box Home Depot or Lowe's store. That being said, you know, we can give you quite a discount, about a 40% discount on the product if you purchase it from us because we buy it in mass quantities. So if it's something that you're already using or something that you'd like to use, give us a ring. Maybe we can save you some money. In fact, I'm pretty sure we can. In terms of distribution, we have distribution all over the country. And as you can see, we've got uh, little pinpoints there. And, and actually, this needs to be updated because we have more than that now. But um, it it's, it's gives us the ability to ship it to you without having to really worry about uh, charging you outlandish amounts of money for shipping. Now, again, as I stated earlier, with uh, the different options in terms of purchasing, it could be uh, a truckload that you purchase or the drop trailer or you can buy by the pallets. Uh, however you want to do it, we can do it for you in many different ways. It's all about saving you money. more money you make, the more product you purchase from us. Now, in terms of who we do business with, I mean, certainly not looking to brag these companies up. They're great companies, but I think it's important to recognize that if you are familiar with these companies that you see here, they're very large companies, and they have the ability to do the market research and to really have you know, a track record on how it's worked, what's the profitability of it, and really is it something that can be done and, and done properly. They've tested it, they've proven that it works and that it's profitable for them. So I would say really just take it from them. If you don't want to believe us, uh, this is a great product and a great service to be able to offer to your clientele. We have a full staff of people that are just here to serve you, the pest management professional. We're not a retail uh, distributor. Uh, we are specifically here to help you. So we have all different ways to help you, whether it's through web support, email, or just give us a ring. Um, that's what we're here for. So now we get to the hook. Keep in mind that opportunity doesn't always knock. Sometimes it just taps. Yeah, 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 I know. So there you go. Think about it. If you've already been thinking about it, chances are pretty good that you know somebody that's already doing it, and maybe you thought about it yourself. This is the year to take action. Give us a call. You can see our number here, 866-284-7247, or visit our tap tube. Go to tapinsulation.com and click on the tap tube icon. If you have difficulty finding that, please just give me a call. Again, my phone number is here. Or just go to tapinsulation.com, and there are links available to you to get into this tap tube. So this concludes my presentation. Will, if you've got some questions from the audience, I would sure love to. Sure do. 
All right, we sure do. Uh, thanks again, Rick. That was a great presentation. Um, I'm going to start with some of the ones that came through during your presentation. Uh, the first one we got here is, um, can you share how TAP is different from other cellulose insulation that has borates besides the EPA sure. registration? Sure. Well, the EPA registration honestly is the most important thing because if it's not a registered pesticide, you can never make the claim that it's going to kill, control, or mitigate any pest. That being said, um, it is definitely different. There's a big difference between your traditional cellulose insulation and TAP in that we're actually using a pesticide-grade boric acid. And it is something that is regulated, and it's something that's mixed in there to a specific recipe so that it meets the criteria to, to be a pesticide. And again, to be a pesticide, it has to kill a certain test population regularly and consistently, and it has to earn that label. So uh, yes, there are other insulations out there or cellulose insulations that, that will contain certain amounts of borate in there, but it's not the right grind or it's not the right mixture or not the right percentage um, in the overall volume to actually kill bugs. Um, and boric acid, yeah, there is uh, borate or borates that are sometimes added, but it's becoming less and less and less as we move forward, and these insulation companies are going a lot more toward um, ammonium sulfates and other types of materials that are added in there exclusively just to work as a flame retardant. Um, what we did was we actually identified the fact that there are borates being used as flame retardants. Why not go in there with a refined pesticide-grade boric acid that we know will work both as a flame retardant and as an actual pesticide. And that was the impetus of the actual um, uh, trademark on this product. But that's a great question. Thank you. And this is from actually uh, the same person. It was kind of a two-part question. How is the blower uh, slash kit different than renting equipment locally? Well, uh, you can rent equipment locally. Um, our experience, and that's certainly what we did when I first started doing this, is we rented equipment and then a U-Haul, and we did it that way. Rental equipment, if it's available to you when you really need it, uh, in most cases is a smaller blower, something that's designed for the do-it-yourselfer. Uh, the equipment package that we put together is something that we're familiar with, and we know that it, in fact, is top-quality equipment. Um, we believe in good equipment. Not the most expensive equipment, but something that we know our pest management professionals that we support can rely on. Um, you know, to have a piece of equipment that's driven by stainless steel chains rather than belts that break, very, very important. Um, in looking back at the days when I used to rent blowers, you know, if in fact they're operable and working properly, they're beat up. And uh, in, in many cases, they break down. And the definition of a true nightmare is two or three pest control technicians on a job site in the middle of a tap job with a busted blower. <laughs> There's just nothing worse. So we want to make certain that you have something that we know you can rely on, something that's going to work for you and not break down. So that's really the reason why we support the, the equipment that we sell. All right. Uh, we had somebody else ask, uh, does it compact like other shredded newspaper insulation? That's a great question and certainly one that comes up a lot. Um, the older cellulose insulations definitely do compact. And you can see where, you know, the insulation that's been in there for 30, 40, 50 years comes out kind of like a brick. Um, tap insulation is warranted for the life of the house. Um, this product will not lose its R value. Certainly it will settle. Uh, 13 to 15% settlation is expected, and that's all factored in in the overall application charts that we give you. But uh, it will never lose its R value. And it's manufactured just a little bit differently. It's not petrified newspaper <clears throat> to the point where it's almost like powdered newspaper. This is actually chunky newspaper uh, with fibrous, fuzzy, hairy edges on it. And uh, it's just something that's happened not just with TAP, but with um, overall the, the, the entire um, 
cellulose industry has gone that way with the insulation uh, because of that specific reason, the compaction. Great question. All right, we're going to talk pests now. Um, First of all, what specific pests are listed on the label that TAP will control, and specifically, will it help control mice and rats? Well, um, I can certainly send you a label uh, so that you can see specifically what insects are on there. Um, you know, but going directly to your question on uh, mice and rats, this is a very common misconception. Uh, Mice and rats are not going to be controlled, mitigated, or killed by the use of tap insulation. Um, I don't know whether it's because there was a misunderstanding or whether it's just overzealous sales inspectors out there in the field. Uh, it's just really not something that you want to say. Uh, this is an insecticide, not a rodenticide, and it will not kill, mitigate, or control mice. Now, that being said, the fact that you're up there prepping that attic and identifying the avenues that mice and rats will exploit to get in, your exclusion work and sealing things up, copper mesh, hardware cloth, foam, whatever makes sense, that's certainly going to go a long ways in helping to, you know, stop future infestations. But uh, in terms of tap insulation doing anything at all to control, mitigate, or kill rodents, absolutely not. And the insects... Just your, your general insects, primarily the self-grooming insects, are going to be on the label for tap, and it kills them, doesn't control them. Um, ants and beetles and silverfish are the most common that people are looking to control in an attic. Tap insulation is, in fact, labeled for that. But, again, we're going to make access of the uh, label for you so that you can see all the insects that are on there. Is the label on your website? Is there access to it there, or would it be something that needs to be sent out? Um, I'm thinking that we probably should go ahead and send a copy of the label out. Okay. And I'm more than happy to do that. In fact, everybody that's on this call today will be getting an email from me with uh, the website information that you need so that you can get into the member section, as well as a label and an MSDS so that you can – um, thoroughly investigate the product. And this was kind of also related to pests. You'll have to excuse me if you already answered this. We did have a lot of questions come in, so I was, and you answered most of them during the presentation, so I was trying to make sure to keep all of them relevant here. How long will the pesticide be effective? Uh, boric acid will last as long as it's there. Um, the product does not have a shelf life. It's, an, it's, a, it's a mineral salt is what boric acid is. Um, and it's really not um, – the toxicity level is, is always going to be the same, but it's something that needs to be ingested. They have to actually get it into their stomach because it works as a stomach poison. And because insects don't have a liver to filter it out of their system, it's those insects that are susceptible. Uh, it's a very common pesticide that's out there today um, in a lot of products that are already used, but it's typically mixed in with uh, – food-grade products like gels or pastes to get the insects to feed on it and get the boric acid into their bellies. In this case, because it's insulation, we're looking for the self-grooming insects, and those are the ones that are exclusively on the label because as they crawl through this tap insulation, the way that it's made, there's a proprietary way that we make this um, where it's bioavailable to the insects by coming in contact with it, and during the self-grooming process, they ingest it into their stomachs. But as long as it's there, it's going to continue killing bugs. And this would be answered by the label, I'm sure, but it's such an interesting question I thought I'd better ask. Um, lots of scorpions in this uh, person's area. They're wondering if scorpions are on the label also. Actually, no. The scorpions are not on the label yet. I know that we are in the, pr in the process of doing some testings. But uh, as far as I know, scorpions have not been added to the label as of yet. Okay. Um, as far as from a technical aspect, is there a fire risk with the product? Absolutely not. Um, because of the fact that this is, in fact, a pesticide-grade boric acid that's in there, it works even better at stopping the product from catching on fire than your traditional um, flame retardants that would be added to your traditional cellulose insulation. We actually have videos on our website uh, showing 
uh, technicians holding a blowtorch uh, right on tap insulation, and it just will not catch fire. So there is no flame or fire hazards whatsoever associated with tap insulation. In fact, we've actually had cases where customers have called us to say thank you um, that they had, you know, an issue with their heating system or they had an issue with a chimney flue and uh, the product smoldered enough to where they had some odor. And by uh, because of that odor, they went and looked and they found that, uh, um, you know, the product actually kept them from catching on fire. Had a couple of cases like that. So, yeah, I'm very proud to say that uh, the product is uh, ultra fire retardant. Okay, another question we have here is, can I purchase tap insulation and apply myself with my own equipment? Um, yes, possibly. Um, I would want to know what type of equipment you're using, just because before I sell you my product, I want to make certain that you know you have equipment that's going to work. Um, your traditional standard cellulose blowing equipment will work with TAP because TAP is, in fact, cellulose insulation. So you don't need to have specialized equipment, but you do need to have something that is manufactured and designed to do uh, fiber movement. All right. Uh, you already answered how long the pesticide would be effective. How, what's the expected lifespan of the product itself? Well, um, the, the product is manufactured and, and warranted by us to never, ever lose its R value for the life of the home. So I hate to use the word never, ever, or forever, because forever is a very long time, and who knows. But um, uh, for the life of the home, this product is warranted not to lose R value. If applied properly and by a, a professional, which is you, once you've been trained by us, you're a certified TAP installer. Um, the product will continue to give the same R value and not lose R value for the life of that home. Of course, there are things that could happen, though. I mean, if there's a roof leak and the product is, uh, you know, we've got water being introduced into it, well, no insulation is going to work under those conditions. Um, certainly that will break down the product. But as long as it remains in a dry area and, um, and it's not moved about or shoveled around, then the product will work just fine, and it will continue to give the same R value for the life of that home. All right. And uh, this person just wanted to clarify that their business, does it need a home and or commercial pest control license to perform this? Um, Whatever state you're located in, what you need is a standard license for in, for applying pesticides. So, uh, for instance, in New York State, you need a 7A license uh, to apply pesticides, and that would be the general pest license. I know in California there is a branch, I think it's a branch 3 license that's required to apply general household pesticides. Uh, whatever your state requires for you to apply pesticides in a client's home, that's what you need to apply TAP, which makes this a perfect add-on service for you. You're probably already certified. All right. Um, well, I think that's all the questions we're going to have time for today. Uh, we want to thank Rick Harris once again uh, for a great presentation. Uh, tap pest control insulation, and uh, the website's there on your screen, as is uh, Rick's email address. So you want to check those out. And uh, thanks again, Rick. Another great presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Will, and thank you, everybody. I hope to work with you very soon. Thank you for attending the Tap into the Growing Insulation Market webinar. A recording of this webinar will be posted on the mypmp.net website and will be emailed to you one day from today. Please visit the Pest Management Professional website for information about future events like this one. Thank you and have a nice afternoon.